I want to show you a couple of things that have been sent to me. At first, they don't seem to have any connection at all, and, and maybe they don't. It's just everything at the moment that's thrust at us does seem to be deliberate, either fraudulent or there to keep us down or to control us. And that's not right and proper. So I'm very grateful to the correspondents who've sent in these following bits of information. And I, I'm going to go through them. So they're long and complicated, but I'm not going to go through the whole documents because that would be tedious and boring. I just want to go through it enough so that you get the idea of what uh, some of the things that is going on. Now, you may remember a couple of days ago, if you've been watching consecutively, and I know some people do, and thank you so much. And by the way, thank you for your emails. I do try to get to them and read them. I can't reply to all of them. There's just too many, and I apologise for that. And thank you for the very nice donations that people uh, drop in. Uh, I, I really appreciate it, and it does help keep the channel going. Right. That said... Uh, we were talking about the 12 presumptions the other day uh, of law. And this is how the legal system gets hold of you and um, confuses you, for one thing, and tries to twist things round. We're going to go into that in a little bit more detail later on and work out exactly who you are in law and how you can remedy all of this, because I think this is very much where... When you think the opposition, they do everything, don't they? The government, the courts and all of these, the council tax, the people who bill you, they do it through paperwork and they make the assumption, they make 12 assumptions of law, 12 presumptions, but they make an assumption that uh, you must know all of this stuff and that therefore if you don't rebut it, then you're pretty stupid. And they make that assumption, and of course most people are not taught this anymore in school, and they don't know this stuff, they don't know who they are, and they end up suffering. And because that's how they deal with it, we ought to be dealing with it back. But then there are other, more nefarious ways people have been manipulating the public, and we'll get onto that in the second document. So with the 12 um, presumptions of law that we looked at, there's... People are sending you bills, corporations are sending you bills, like a council tax, like um, a, an electric bill or a utilities bill, and we pay willy-nilly, don't we? We go, oh, blimey, you know, especially in these tough times when some people are paying bills that they can ill afford, the prices have gone up, they're out of their control, it's not really what they've agreed, terms and conditions have magically changed which is uh, fraudulent in and of itself, and people are not eating, they're desperately worried uh, and trying to keep their bills. And this worry is the thing that is eating people up, and we've got to get past all of that. So let's have a look at this first one. And this was sent to me, and just follow this dialogue here. It says, you cannot be in debt to a corporation or company. It is not possible, and that is a fact. Uh, think about it. Who exactly from that company do you believe you are in debt with? Remember, you are a living man or a living woman. You're not just a name in capitalization on a bit of paper. That's not you. Flesh and blood is you. This is so important to get your head round that you are not a piece of paper with capitalization in dog Latin, in legalese, in... Um, completely a different language let's just go on with this so um yes who from the company do you have a valid legal binding contractual agreement with and the answer is nobody because these people don't sign anything do they you get a contract it's not signed by anybody it's not signed at all um it's it just comes in it's a demand it's not even a proper bill or an invoice. Let's see what else we've got here. It says there are some fundamentals to be given before an agreement or contract is valid and therefore enforceable. For example, and this is what the bit that I want to get onto, a full disclosure by the parties is absolutely necessary. If there's no full disclosure by the parties, then the agreement is void from the outset. There would not be any physical, presentable evidence 
to any missing disclosure. But the absence of this material physical evidence is the evidence of fraud. So if you don't if you don't have full disclosure by both parties, in other words, if there's stuff that's not in the contract um, when you have one, assuming you have one, let's face it, mostly these uh, council ha- council tax bills and various other bills don't have uh, um, all the disclosure. And also when they changing the terms and conditions, as I say, uh, where is that full disclosure? An agreement consider uh, sorry agreed consideration by both parties. Let me highlight this if I can so you can see it. Um, Agreed consideration by both parties. There must be a consideration by both parties. There must be material evidence of this consideration. Now, I would take that to be a signature by both parties. You've both come in and you both agree to it, not just someone going, oh, um, yeah, I have no choice. Both of you it's like you negotiating a contract, aren't you? Let's see what else. Let's go to the next one here. There should be a signed agreement by both parties. Without the signature from both parties, there is no material evidence to the agreement or contract. Now, this is where sometimes I've noticed, and somebody pointed this out to me, they can be quite cheeky. Do you know when you get these and um, these agreements, you go in and perhaps it's a mortgage or a something, and they say, oh, yeah, sign here. And then they go here and, and here, and they just put some marks on the page, tending to put X's. Well, I understand that that is their mark. It's not a signature. But it is their mark. In other words, they, and when you've signed it, it makes it legally binding. Whereas if they didn't sign it at all, if you went, oh, I can see where it is, you don't need to mark it, mate, and you signed it, it wouldn't be actually proper because they need both signatures. But they could claim those little squiggles are theirs. Now, I don't know how true that is, but that's what I've been told. Uh, Let's move on. So... Here we go. Must be compliant with the Companies Act. And we'll talk about that in another video, what that means. But uh, let's go on to the next one. The very absence of the company's seal or signatures from the company is the material evidence of the fact that the activities are fraudulent from the start. And very often on those contracts that we get, they do not have those um, seals or the signatures, as I said. You know, they might have a printed signature, which is not real. It's got to be in wet ink. It's got to be signed by a real pen. Otherwise, it doesn't stand up. So uh, let's just move on a little bit more. So if you do not have a valid contractual obligation with a man or woman, a living man or woman, from the company claiming the alleged debt then there is no debt, no liability. Therefore, the claim of a debt is fraudulent and in nature and a chargeable criminal offence. And this fact needs to be understood. I don't want to go any further in this. There's, um, there's a whole load more and we'll get into that in bits. I just want to sort of do these bits just so that you and I'm on this learning curve myself. I'm not claiming to be a lawyer. I'm not claiming that this is legal advice. So please don't take it that way. This is just stuff that's been handed to me and I'm sharing it with you because there will be many, many people who feel that they have been fraudulently engaged in a contract um, to continually pay for stuff that they don't need to or that there is no contract and no contract has happened, that you've just been hoodwinked into it. And that's a very bad situation for all of us, and I think it's happening everywhere. Now, I want to go to this other piece of information I want to share with you because it kind of backs up this whole thing about why and how we're being hoodwinked all the time in this particular situation. So somebody else sent me this document here. Some people may have seen it. And it's supposedly a top secret document, I think from the 1950s. And it says here in this tiny writing, uh, this is about silent weapons for quiet wars. 
This astonishing document was discovered, it says, in a surplus copier purchased from Boeing Aircraft in 1986. It reveals details of a plan hatched in the embryonic days of the Cold War, which called for the control of the masses through manipulation of industry, people's pastimes, education and political leanings. It called for a quiet revolution, pitting brother against brother and diverting the public's attention from what was really going on. For all intents and purposes, this document has come to pass and it's reprinted um, in its original form. So it's, uh, it's all in types and typeset and stuff. Now, this is a long document. I don't want to go through all of this, but there's some relevant bits that I think is worth looking. Apparently, it's a genuine document. I cannot tell you, of course. So take this as, uh, as you know, with a pinch of salt. But just see what you think. So this document is several pages long. Um, and it's got all sorts of stuff you can see um, here. It's typed in an old-fashioned thing. Uh, it says, Silent weapon technology has evolved from operation research, strategic and uh, tactical methodology developed under the military management in England during World War II. Uh, it talks um, about all sorts of stuff. The quiet war was quietly declared by international elite at a meeting held in 1954. Uh, there's so much to this that's absolutely fascinating. Um, and it talks about energy and, and ways to, you know, dumb people down. It talks about the family. It talks about the work and various things. Um, it's got various diagrams, as you can see, electrical circuits, because after all, we are all just electricity. Things are going on at vibrations. Um, but the core of this is to manipulate the population. Now, I want to get to this page here because it starts to talk about the strategies. And this is where you can start to see how we, ordinary everyday people, have been manipulated by subsequent governments and those people behind the government who have some form of control on them. And this is very worrying and very alarming and we can see that it's definitely been happening so let's have a look firstly table of strategies so it's got a do list and how to do it how to achieve it first keep the public ignorant uh, access to control points prices and sales uh, it says create preoccupation Attack the family unit, where we can see that that's been going on. Um, control of the education of the young. This is happening and they've ramped it up. Give them less cash and more credit and doles. So in other words, there is more self-indulgence and less data. It is distracting us left, right and centre. Attack the privacy of the church. In other words, it's destroying faith in this kind of government. Um, social conformity with computer programming simplicity. And, and we've seen that simplicity. Have we not seen that with um, what I call Windows OAP, which is effectively, you know, making big icons where you don't know what's going on a computer. It's just press this button and it works. We've seen the... Um, convenience of everything which has made us lazy from the moment that one of these came into existence where you didn't have to get up and retune the television you actually could just sit there from the sofa scoffing yourself silly and press buttons the television itself of course let's go a little bit further into this uh, minimize the tax protest um, not quite sure what they mean by that but, you know, in other words, keeping you paying your taxes, stabilise the consent coefficients, in other words, making everything very simple, uh, tight control of variables, simpler computer input data, it talks about English boundary conditions. In other words, it's simplifying things for, for people, proper timing, minimum resistance to control, well, we've seen that, I mean, we've been dumbed down. So let's... Let's have a look here where we get into something even more, uh, or I guess it shows what this is all about. 
uh, and this is the um, the primary strategy. Here it is in this bit here. Let's just highlight this. It's not so easy. This is a PDF that it's uh, reading. It says. Experience has proven that the simplest method of securing a silent weapon and gaining control of the public is to keep the public undisciplined and ignorant of basic uh, systems, principles, on the one hand, while keeping, those, keeping them confused, disorientated and distracted with matters of no real importance on the other. And this is achieved in the following ways. It says, by disengaging their minds, sabotaging their mental activities, by providing low quality programs of public education in mathematics, logic, system design and economics, and by uh, discouraging technical creativity, engaging their emotions, increasing their self-indulgences and their indulgence in emotional and physical activities by unrelenting, unrelenting emotional affrontations and attacks, which they have done, mental and emotional rape, in other words, they say, by way of constant barrage of sex, violence and wars in the media, especially the TV and newspapers giving them what they desire in excess, junk food for thought, and depriving them of what they really need, i.e. Um, common sense, critical thinking, proper food, rewriting history and law, and subjecting the public to the deviant creation, thus being able to shift their thinking from personal needs to highly fabricated outside priorities. So um, there you go. And, and it goes on. I mean, it just goes on. One of the things it talks about is to use advertising. Talk to everybody as if they are 12 years old, it says. And the hypnotic mark, uh, uh, capabilities of television, the programming. We've heard this term before, programming. They are programming you through the television. This is why we've got to get rid of all of this. They've been doing this since the 1950s, conceived in the 19, during the Second World War in the 1930s, in the late 30s. And this secret doc, I mean, it has been happening. It has been happening. I mean, just look at this. I will finish because I didn't want this to be too long. But look what's going on uh, here. The diversion strategy. Keep the adult pup pup. Keep the adult public attention diverted away from real social issues and captivated by matters of no real importance. In schools, that's through the media, in schools, keep the young public ignorant of real mathematics, real economics, real law and real history. Through entertainment, keep the public entertainment below a sixth grade level. And work, look at this, keep the public busy, 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 with no time to think, back on the farm with other animals. Well, obviously, we're not in those days. Um, so keep them away, I guess, from a farm with other animals where they can have time to think. I don't know what that bit means. Maybe that's just because, you know, they didn't expect the advance. But everybody's in the city. So much of that is true. And so linking that with the first one, we've been dumbed down. It said just there, don't tell them about real law. We don't know about contracts. They get us with these bits of paper. We think we are this legal fiction. We don't understand who we are. They've dumbed us down. They've diverted us with television, with adverts, with keeping us busy, with all these things. Poisoning now, of course, the, uh, the air and the water, dumbing us down all the time. Um, making us find that convenience is... The, and it's our fault. We've not fought back against this. Well, it's time we did, because this is how we get out of it. We no longer look at the convenience of fast food, um, highly processed food. 
We start to eat properly, healthily. I know it's more expensive. We get rid of all the trinkets and the peripheral things we don't need. We stop watching television. We start reading books. We start educating ourselves. We start pushing back. We start saying, no, I don't consent. We start saying that this is the beginning of the new us and they will not push their plan forward. We will not let them. We no longer consent to their nonsense. Thank you for watching.